Hello, and welcome to another Logic tutorial with me, Ed the Shed. My name is Ed, but I'm not a Shed. In this video, I'll go through the Auto Filter plugin. Now, many of you will probably have your preferred, third-party filter plugins. That is fine, but for those that don't, this is a very nice little plugin that can be used for many different things with your production. The way that the auto filter works is by using a threshold parameter, just like many of Logic's other plugins. So if we think back to what a threshold parameter does, a threshold sets the point at which the plugin starts working. So any signal that is higher in dB, then the threshold set will be affected by the plugin. So, the auto filter works by filtering the signal when it exceeds the threshold through an LFO or an A, D, S, R envelope. Thatch attack, decay, sustain and release. Right, let's open an auto filter in logic. This can be found in the filter section in the inserts panel. I know, there are lots of knobs and sliders on this plugin, but it's not as confusing as it might seem. So let's break it down into six main sections for a start. So we have the threshold slider. Then we have the LFO and envelope sections. Next up is the filter parameters, followed by the distortion section, and then finally, the master section. Sick. No no, literally, I was just sick. Okay sorry about that, let's get going. So just to recap, the threshold slider sets the point at which the plugin starts working. So the signal that exceeds the threshold will then trigger the envelope or LFO. This in my opinion, can be a good place to start when using this plugin. So, next up let's talk about the envelope parameters. Most of these parameters should be self-explained as this works just like any other basic envelope. The two main parameters to look at here are, the cutoff mod slider and the dynamic knob. So, let's talk about the dynamic knob. This knob causes the input signal to modulate the peak value of the envelope. So what it does is, it lets you choose how much modulation you want to apply, but only to the peak value. The cutoff mod slider lets you choose how intensely you want the signal that has gone through the envelope to affect the filter cutoff. Simple as that. Okay so that is the envelope section covered, let's look at the LFO section now. This has quite a lot of features so I will try and manage my time on each parameter appropriately. Let's start with the rate knob. This can be used in two different modes just like most LFOs. You can have it in sync mode, which is when the beat sync button is on, and this lets you choose your LFO rate to a synced amount. If however, you turn the beat sync button off, then this gives you free hand controls for the rate. The top slider lets you change the rate in hertz and then the middle knob lets you fine tune that again, in one thousandth of a hertz this time. The phase knob lets you shift the phase relationship between the LFO and the sequencer. This can only be used in sync mode. Next up is the decay slash delay knob. This knob is a handy one in my opinion. It lets you choose how much time you want the LFO to take to go from zero to its maximum value. So if you turn it more and more to the right you will notice that the LFO takes longer and longer to fade in. Now, if you start turning the knob to the left, the more and more you do this, the less time it takes for the LFO to fade away. So, when you get to this stage, when you are using the auto filter, ask yourself, 
Do I want the LFO to fade into the sound or do I want the LFO to fade out of the sound? And how long do I want it to take to do this? If I don't want to do either of those things, then I will just leave my knob in the middle. Boom. Next up is the rate mod knob. This knob is pretty bloody cool. This might be a little confusing, but try and stay with me. If it is at 0% then there is no modulation applied. But as you bring it up, it increases the modulation width of the LFO from 0 to the maximum value set. This only happens when the input signal exceeds the threshold though. I will have a little play with the LFO knobs that we have just talked about now, so that you can hear the effects of these yourself, and I will start by quickly showing you the sound before it has any effect on it at all. Here we go. I hope that helps a little bit. It will all become a lot more apparent when you have a go yourself. Let's move on. The next knob along is the stereo phase, which can only be used with stereo tracks. This knob sets the phase relationship between the left and right stereo channels. It gives a kind of tremolo effect to the sound. Below these knobs is a waveform section. In this section you can choose what sort of wave you want your LFO to have. The pulse width slider further lets you shape the curves of the waveform. Sadly it does not show visually how you are changing the curve so for this slider. I recommend you just have a really good old play with it so you can start getting used to the effects of it on the different waveforms. I am not fully aware of when to use the retrigger function, but when it is on, it means that the waveform starts at zero as soon as the threshold is exceeded. If any of you boffins out there can shed a bit more light on this particular parameter, then that would be bloody spectacular. So the last parameter in the LFO section is the cutoff mod slider, and this does exactly the same thing as the one we have in our envelope section. So let's move on to the filter section. The cutoff knob is a low pass filter but it can be changed to other types of filter. So you can set the cutoff frequency with this. The resonance knob emphasizes the area around the cutoff frequency. So, if I start to bring my knob up, then the area of emphasis or the bandwidth around the cutoff frequency becomes wider. The fatness slider basically applies extra low frequency boost to the signal. 
Just the very fact that it is called fatness makes you want to crank that little sucker all the way up. Don't let it mislead you, sometimes it's not needed at all. The next part of the filter section is the filter mode buttons which just allow you to choose what sort of filter you want to apply out of low pass, high pass, and band pass filters. The four boxes below that again are purely options for the low pass filter. They let you choose what sort of slope you want on your low pass filter, 6 being a gentle slope, and 24 being a much sharper slope. Going down again, we get to the distortion section. This section has a very heavy effect on the sound, even when applied in small amounts, so make sure you use these knobs wisely. On the plus side, when used correctly, they can really bring out your sounds. These two are a pair of prize knobs. Ha ha ha. Okay let's clear this one up and take a quick look at the master section. Pretty simple really. You have your master fader and then you have your dry signal fader which applies the original unprocessed signal into the sound alongside the signal that you have just processed. Bloody marvelous. That will be all for this video. Go and have a mess around with this yourself. If you do this, I guarantee that the skills you pick up from using it, will be able to be carried over onto other synths and plugins from all sorts of sources. I would say that around 90% of the parameters that are on the auto filter, will be found on nearly all other filter plugins in some form or another. So learn one really well, and then others will start to become a lot easier to learn. Thanks for watching, see you next time.